Hey there, thanks for joining me today. Today's yoga class is called Hatha Yoga. And this is a style of yoga. The, the Hatha Yoga class is typically a set of physical postures, so yoga poses, incorporating breathing techniques. And this practice, it goes a little more slowly with more static posture holds than a typical vinyasa flow class. The word Hatha can be translated as the yoga of activity and as sun, ha, and moon, ta. So this is the yoga of balance. Know that as we go through this practice, we are gonna start standing, and then we'll lower back down to seated. If you feel that you might wanna have some props, go ahead, gather them, have them near you, and we'll get started from a standing position. Starting off in Tadasana, our mountain pose, positioning the feet at hip distance. So go ahead and look down to your feet. Make sure there's enough space for one more foot of yours to fit between the feet. Then let's just lift the shoulders up to the ears, take the shoulders back and down as a reminder to relax the shoulders. Palms are facing forward. Go ahead and close your eyes and we'll use this time at the start of our practice in our mountain pose of Tadasana to bring awareness to our breath. Bring all of your attention to the way that you're breathing now. And if you notice that your breath is short, practice lengthening the breath. On your next inhale, breathe in all the way to the top of the breath, all the way until you can't take in any more air. And when you're ready to exhale, slowly release the air. Inhale again. Exhale, slowly let it go. Few more rounds, breath awareness using this time of connecting with your breath to transition from the start of your day into your practice. Continue to breathe. Continue to let go with each exhale, maybe taking a sigh of relief. One more time. And start to flutter the eyes open if the eyes are still closed. Feel the foundation of the feet. And as you look down to your feet, go ahead and bring them together so that the big toes meet, little space at the heels. We're gonna start off with our physical postures, our yoga poses and our hatha practice with tree pose. This is a very common posture in our practice. It's not only a standing balance, but it's also a hip opener. So one leg will be the foundation. The opposite leg, you're gonna lift your heel. Now, as you lift your heel, you can stay here. You can lift your foot, take the toes off the mat, and bring the arch of your foot to your calf muscle. Now, pay very close attention that you're not pressing directly on your knee joint. We wanna keep the knee safe. It might feel good to take your hands to your hips. Notice that the knee is out to the side, so we're getting external rotation for the hip. If you feel like you need support here, you can take your hand to a wall space. That's gonna be really helpful. If you feel like you can go deeper into this tree pose, then you can take your hand to reach for your ankle, and this way you can position the sole of your foot to your inner thigh. Now, the more you press your foot to your thigh, the more that's gonna help with your stability and balance. Tree pose. From here, you can take different arm variations. Hands can come to the heart center in prayer position. Don't forget, you can take one hand to the wall if that's better for your practice today. Maybe if you're in the free space and you feel like you can challenge yourself a little bit more, you reach the arms up, growing the branches of your tree. 
And if you feel really stable and comfortable, maybe you close your eyes. Noticing when you close your eyes, a totally different sensation. Feel the foot working, feel the engagement of the muscles in this standing foundational foot. Now, if the eyes are closed, go ahead and open them up. On your next exhale, slowly bring your hands down to your hips. Release your foot that you have lifted. As you exhale, take the foot down. Once you position this foot down, lift the heel of the foot that was your standing foot and just draw circles with your knee so that you're feeling a nice stretch at the arch of the foot. This way you can release any tension and then circle around opposite direction. Now, keep the heel lifted, slide the toes towards your standing foot. We're coming into the opposite side. This is our option one. Option two, we can lift the toes off the mat and bring the sole of the foot to the calf muscle. Avoid pressing to the knee. And if we wanna go deeper, we can take the hand to assist the ankle, guiding the foot to the inner thigh. Standing balance, hip opener. Don't forget, you can use the wall for support. The wall is an awesome prop. Hands can stay at the hips, or you can bring your hands to prayer position, thumbs at the heart center. If you did so on the other side, maybe you grow your tree branches. Maybe you close your eyes. Give yourself time to feel into the body, into the standing balance pose. Feel gratitude for this time of practicing Hatha Yoga today. Know that this is a really great practice if you're into meditation. The physical movements give us an opportunity to get the wiggles out so that we can then sit in stillness at the end of our practice, whether that's meditation or Shavasana for you. Now, if the arms are lifted or the eyes are closed, flutter the eyes open and gently bring the hands back down to the hips. As you inhale, disconnect the foot, and as you exhale, send the foot down. Now lift the heel of the foot that was just your foundational foot, and then draw circles with the knee. So working that tension out, flexing the toes, stretching the arch of the foot, and then we'll take it opposite direction. We'll set the heel down, back to center, redistribute the weight between both legs, and then open the feet wider. You decide how wide you want the feet to go. Know that from here, we're gonna come into several standing postures, and we're gonna work one side at a time. So right now, you've got all 10 toes facing the same direction. The pinky edges of your feet are to the short ends of your mat. Take one foot, I'm gonna take my right foot, toes to the top of the mat. My legs stay straight. Now, I'm gonna lift the arms up and we're setting up for trikonasana, triangle pose. So with my right toes pointing forward, I'm gonna reach my right fingers forward, my left hip goes back, and then I rotate the arms. Now, options here. The back of your hand can rest to your inner thigh. If you're working with a block, you can take a block to the inside of the ankle, bringing your hand down to the block. Now, you wanna reach the left fingers up to the ceiling. Feel a nice stretch at the right inner thigh. You might even feel a stretch at the left side of the back. Imagine that your body is up against a wall and you're trying to press your shoulders and your hips up to the wall. So with the right hand down, think about left shoulder stacked above and breathe. On your next inhale, lift the arms up. Now exhale, bend that right knee. We're gonna transition now into extended side angle. So we're gonna bend the right elbow, bring the forearm to the right thigh, not the knee. 
reach the left fingers up and then overhead. Long line of energy here. So the right knee is tracking above the right ankle, press to the pinky edge of the left foot, reach overhead, reach, reach, reach. And on your next inhale, lift the arms back to center, keep the knee bent, and we're already in our next posture of warrior two. Turn your head to gaze to your right middle finger, keep the right knee bent, and just look down for a moment. Make sure the right knee is open to the right so that you can see the right big toe and the second toe. Now, if you notice that your body is forward or back, bring your body to center. Keep looking to that right middle finger. Feel the strength in your legs, building strength now in our standing posture. And then on your next exhale, let the arms float down, press into the right foot, straighten the right leg. Now we're gonna turn the right toes, same direction as the left toes. We're gonna to take those three options now on the other side. So rotate left toes to the back of the mat, or however you have yourself set up, coming into our triangle. If you were using the block, you're gonna to wanna to bring it to the inside of the ankle. If you're confused about the side that we're in, just know that my camera is flipped, so you can take whatever side you want to. Maybe you just listen to the verbal cues. So the legs are straight. Left toes are pointed to the short end of the mat. Right toes are pointed to the long end of the mat. Legs are straight. Reach the arms up. Now reach through the left fingers, feel that right hip go back, rotate the arms. Now this left hand can come to the inner thigh or maybe if it's available in your body, maybe the hand comes down to the block. Now open the heart, gaze up, reach the right fingers up. If you're looking up and this hurts your neck, you can rotate your head to look down to the mat but continue to reach up through the fingers. Stacking the arms. Imagine you're up against a wall and you're trying to press your back up against the wall. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Exhale, let go. Inhale, rotate the arms. Exhale, bend the left knee. Make sure the knee is tracking above the ankle. Then bend the left elbow, bring the left forearm to the thigh. Reach the right fingers up and then overhead. Reach for that long line of energy. Nice deep stretch from the foot to the arm. Reach, continue to reach, continue to breathe. And on the next inhale, we'll just rotate the arms up. We'll keep a bend in the knee. We'll turn to look to our left middle finger and we'll just check our setup here. Drop the gaze down to the left knee, opening the left knee out enough to see your left big toe and your second toe. And then noticing if your body is shifting forward or back, just keep the body, the torso centered and then gaze back to the left middle finger. And as you look to the middle finger, feel the engagement in the thighs and the legs, feel the strength that you're building. And on your next exhale, lower the arms, press into the left foot to straighten the left leg. Turn the toes so all 10 toes are facing the same direction. Now, if you're working with a block, just set it somewhere where you can easily reach to it if you need to. I'll start the demonstration without the block. So now we're coming into our wide-legged forward fold. Before you fold forward, make sure that you feel comfortable in this wide-legged stance. So by comfortable, I mean you don't want to feel like your legs are ripping apart. You want to be able to press into the feet but still feel like you're in control of the standing posture. So if you need to shorten the distance, just bring the feet closer together. If at any point you notice that you need a deeper stretch, just open them further apart. 
Now take your hands to your hips. Inhale, open your heart, send your elbows back as if they're gonna meet each other. And then as you exhale, hinge at the hips, fold forward. Once you fold forward, keep the legs straight. Feel a deep stretch at the back of the thighs and the hamstrings. Take your hands from your hips down to the mat. Now, if your hands don't reach the mat, this is where you can use your block so that you can bring the floor up to you. So you decide if you need the prop or not. Continue to fold with each exhale. Practice keeping the legs straight. Just pause and feel sensation. Notice where you're feeling a deep stretch. Relax the head, relax the neck. No need to hold it up. One more round of breath. As you inhale, take a half lift. And as you exhale, start to heel toe the feet back to hip distance. Once you bring the feet to hip distance, inhale, take a half lift, bring your palms to your shins. And then exhale, fold. Uttanasana, forward fold. You can bend your knees if this is more comfortable for your legs. If your hamstrings are pretty open, you can straighten the legs. Maybe you take the option of bringing your hands to opposite elbows, framing your head with your arms. And taking an opportunity to stretch the back of the body. Now, if this forward fold is making you dizzy or it feels like a little too much in your body today, you can take the modified version of bringing your hands to your blocks and just taking a half lift. So that might be a little more comfortable for you. You decide what's working. Just taking a few more rounds of breath so that we can get some decompression in the spine, spinal flexion. And by taking the hands to opposite elbows, we can get more traction for the spine. Exhale, let it go. Now, if your hands are on your elbows, release. Take your palms to the mat. If you need help to make this connection, bend your knees. From here, we'll step the right foot back, and then we'll step the left foot back as if we're gonna come into a plank position, but we're gonna lift those hips, send them back for our downward facing dog. Spread the fingers wide. Might be more comfortable for you to open the hands a little wider than shoulder distance. And remember, if the back of the legs are tight, you can always bend your knees. Focus on sending your chest towards your thighs, taking the pressure out of the shoulders. If this is uncomfortable, you can come into child's pose. That's where we're going to go next anyway. If you want to stay here for a couple more rounds of breath, you can take a deep bend in one knee as the opposite leg straightens. And then try that on the other side, noticing the sensation going up the straight leg into the hip. Maybe taking one more on each side. Maybe rocking the hips from side to side. Feeling into the side body. And then from here, shift forward, soften the knees, gently lower the knees down to the mat. Now we're coming into Balasana, our child's pose. You can take your knees open the width of the mat, big toes together, send the hips towards the heels, extend the arms forward, Lower the forehead to the mat or to a block. Really great option for hip opening. 
And if you'd like a different option for a low back release, the knees will come together, the feet will come together. And then from here, arms by your sides. Now forehead to the mat. Maybe you try both and see which one is really working for your body today. So after trying both, I'm noticing that my hips want more of a stretch. So I'll come back into that wide knee option. Big toes meet. Lower down. Enjoy the stretch. Give yourself time. Let's enjoy two more rounds of breath with whichever option you chose. And on your next inhale, slowly lift your head. There's no rush. Take your time. Remember, we're practicing Hatha Yoga. We're spending a little more time in our static poses to feel the strengthening, to feel the stretching in the body. Now, as you come up, you're in a kneeling position. From here, I want you to bring your knees together if they're not already. So I'll turn so that you can see. Now we're in our hero pose. We've got the shins and the tops of the feet as the foundation. Remember, if this is too much compression for your knees, you can always sit on a block or two. I really like this option because this is lifting the hips higher than the knees. So it's really opening that angle at the knees. Feet are hugging the blocks. Now in this hero pose or supported hero pose with the blocks. We'll take the arms out to the side. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Now interlace your fingers, flip your palms, press your palms up to the sky. As you press your palms up and keep your arms straight, tuck your chin towards your chest. Feel a nice stretch at the back of the neck. I can even feel this stretch going into my upper back down to my mid back, keep the chin low, keep pressing the palms up. And on your next exhale, lower the hands down. And from here, we'll come on to our seat. So we'll remove the blocks if you were sitting on them or any other prop, bring the feet out to one side. Now we're coming into Baddha Konasana, bound angle. We want to bring the soles of the feet together. And we really want to think about how close we want the feet to be. So the closer the heels are towards the body, the deeper the stretch is going to be for the hips and the inner thighs. This might be really uncomfortable for your knees. So to protect the knees, and if you have sensitive knees, send the feet further in front. When you look down to your lap, you'll see this uh, diamond shape. Take your thumbs to the arches of your feet. From here, we can just give our feet a little bit of love. So we press the thumbs in and then just take circles. Little foot massage. Maybe circling around opposite direction. And we'll stop the movement at the thumbs. We can keep the hands here, or you might want to curl the fingers around the toes. Inhale, reach the crown of your head up. And as you exhale, fold forward. Think about bringing your belly button towards your feet rather than your head, keeping the spine long. Now, your forearms might rest on your low leg. Fold, fold, fold. Gaze is down to the floor, right in front of the feet. And with each exhale, see if you can fold a little deeper. Remember in our Hatha practice, we want to give ourselves time in each pose. Several rounds of breath. Really feeling the sensation in the body knowing that we're getting so many benefits just from spending time moving our body in a really safe way. 
focusing on proper alignment and letting ourselves go at this more intentional pacing. Notice if you can fold a little deeper, if that's available, if you want to. And allow yourself to back out if at any point you feel that you've gone too far. And on your next inhale, let the head rise up, crown of the head reaching up towards the ceiling. And from here, Take your hands outside of your thighs and gently guide the knees together. Now we'll extend the legs forward. Both legs are straight, feet together, legs together. Take your hands outside of your hips. Inhale, reach the fingers to the sky and then exhale, hinge at the hips, fold forward. Hashimottanasana, seated forward fold. Now, as you reach the hands forward, if your hands can make it to your ankles or your feet, you can grab on. Otherwise, you can just rest your arms by your sides. And with each exhale, fold a little deeper. Stay where you are. Notice if you're really open in the legs and you can reach past your feet, then you can take a block to the soles of your feet, hands now grab onto the block, and as you exhale, fold. A few more rounds of breath. Close your eyes, notice where you feel the stretch. For this last round of breath, see if you can fold a little deeper. Inhale, let the head rise up. And slowly making your way back to that straight spine. Take your hands outside of your hips for Dandasana. So you're making your body in the shape of an L. Flex your feet. Activate the legs so much that you feel your heels lifting off the mat. Gaze forward. Notice where you feel the engagement in your body, in your arms, in your back, in your legs. And on your next exhale, soften. Now looking at your feet, open the heels of your feet to the edges of your mat. From here, we're going to bend one knee. So I'm going to bend my right knee and then I'll bring the sole of my foot to my inner thigh, just like we did in the third option for our tree pose. Now, again, if this is too much for your knee, then you can open the angle of the knee by taking the sole of the foot down to the calf muscle. Avoid pressing the foot onto the knee. Okay, so we can go wider or the sole of the foot can come to the inner thigh. Now, from here, we want the torso to move towards the extended leg. So go ahead and take your hands to your ribs, rotate your torso to your straight leg. Inhale, reach your fingers straight up, and as you exhale, hinge at the hips, reach for your leg or your foot. First, feeling into the hamstring. Inhale deeply, exhale, fold just to your level of comfort. If your hand doesn't reach your foot, you can use a strap or you can lower the hands down. Feeling deeply into the hamstring. Arms are framing the leg. Exhale, fold. Notice if you can feel this in your back, particularly on the opposite side of the extended leg. 
And then from here, we'll take another variation to feel more into the back. So inhale, lift the head. Keep one arm outside of the extended leg. Inhale, reach the opposite arm up and then overhead, just like we did in our extended side angle. Now, open the heart, gaze up, feel a nice deep stretch in the side body, going into the side of the low back. This is an awesome posture to take to stretch the QL, the quadratus lumborum. It's the biggest muscle in the low back and it's a muscle that needs to be stretched daily. Reach through the fingers, give time to stretch this muscle. Know that by stretching this muscle, we can ease tension and tightness out of the low back. And on the next inhale, reach the arms up, bring the torso to center. We're gonna do those two variations now on the opposite side. So the knee that's bent is now gonna lengthen. Remember, you want your feet open the width of the mat. Opposite knee bends now. Option to take the sole of the foot to the inner thigh, just like we did in option number three in tree pose. If this is too much for the knee, remember you can open the angle by bringing the sole of the foot towards the calf. Leave the knee alone. You don't wanna press at the knee joint. So whichever option you choose, look to your straight leg. Take your hands to your ribs, rotate your torso to face your extended leg. As you inhale, reach your fingers straight up to the ceiling. And as you exhale, hinge at the hips, reach forward. Maybe the hand grabs onto the foot or the ankle or the block, or maybe the arms just frame the foot. And as you exhale, relax the head, relax the neck. Think about lowering the forehead to the knee, and all you have to do is fold and breathe and give yourself this really valuable time of stretching. Feeling into the hamstring, into the hip. Lots of deep opening. And feeling so much gratitude for giving our ourselves this time of self-care. Now we're going to start to open up into our second option. So the leg that you have extended, that same side arm is going to be outside of the low leg. Inhale, reach the opposite fingers straight up first and then overhead. Now notice if you're collapsing at the chest, open the chest, gaze up. If you're looking up and this hurts your neck, rotate to face down, but keep your arm overhead. So think bicep above the ear, reach, keep the glutes down, feel a stretch in the side body. Feel the stretch going into the low back on the side. Reach, stretch, and breathe. Almost time to come out. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, take the hands down. Now we're gonna open both legs. So both legs are gonna be extended. We'll open the legs as wide as we can without the calf muscles and the hamstrings popping up. So we don't want this. We want to feel the legs completely down. There's just gonna be a little natural space underneath the knees. Before we come into our wide-legged forward fold, as you inhale, you can point your toes, and as you exhale, you can flex your feet. And again, inhale, point, nice stretch. Exhale, flex. Mobility for the ankles one more time. Inhale, point, exhale, flex. Now just soften the feet, let them go where they naturally want to. For some of us, that's the toes, moving internally. For some of us, it's external. Just let the feet go where they naturally want to. Bring the hands in front of you. If you think that you're gonna need support for your upper body, have your blocks close by. I'll show you how to use them. 
Inhale, reach the crown of the head straight up, and then as you exhale, hinge at the hips forward forward. Now you just wanna fold forward enough to feel a nice deep stretch at the inner thighs primarily, but you'll also feel this in the hamstrings and the hips. You might be able to come onto your forearms. You might take a block underneath the ribs to support you. You might take a second block underneath the forehead. If the forehead reaches down to the block, then you don't have to hold yourself up. The palms can be facing up as an intention of receiving, particularly if you're in need of energy these days. If you've been working with a lot of energy and you need grounding, then you can rotate the palms facing down. Just using your hand positioning as an intention in your practice. Feeling this nice deep stretch in the static pose. Noticing that the longer we stay here, the more you're able to open up. So you might need to change the positioning of your props, lowering the blocks to a lower height if you need to. And we're just looking for a nice deep stretch. We don't want to push ourselves to the point of pain or major discomfort. Just looking for sensation. Giving ourselves time to open up to release congestion in the body, allowing the tightness to go with our time, with our breath, with our intention of serving our body through our practice today. We'll take three more rounds of breath. You decide if you want to stay with the props or not. Last round of breath. Inhale, slowly lift the head. Take your time. There's no rush. Exhale, walk the hands towards the body. Reaching the crown of the head. Straightening the spine for axial extension. Inhale through the nostrils. Exhale, open the mouth, let it go. All right. Now, we're going to try a variation of a seated spinal twist. I'm going to set this up and you can try this option. If it's not working for your legs, then you can just stick with the option of having one leg in front of the other like I'm demonstrating right now. The option that I'm going to show us today is to take one leg out to the side. Now, the leg that you have out to the side. Find that hip crease and then see if you can bring your opposite foot on top. So the pinky edge is coming to the hip crease. Now I know this won't be available for some of you. If not, that's totally okay. You can bring your legs back to the other option so that you have just one in front of the other and you don't have the one out to the side. Now with your foot in your hip crease, the toes are out to the side. We're going to take the same side arm of the foot that you have stacked on top of the leg, reach that hand behind your body, behind your low back, and reach for your foot. This is a little bit of a challenge for me on this side because I've got the microphone pack right here in the way. But as you can see, you're trying to make the connection of the hand, of the arm that's behind your back, to your foot. Now. You're getting a nice shoulder opener here. Maybe you turn and look past your shoulder, coming into a gentle twist. And slowly come back to center. Release your hand from behind your back. And take your hand out to the side. So again, if this option is not working for your body, you're going to have one leg in front of the other, and then you can just spinal twist this way. 
Yeah, so take whatever's working for you. If you liked the first option and you wanna try it on the other side, let's set it up. Take this leg out. Then we're gonna lift opposite foot, bring the pinky side all the way to the hip crease, let the knee come down. If you're almost there but not quite and you've got the knee lifted, maybe you take a block to support yourself. This might be a good starting point for you. Otherwise, the knee can ground down. And then the same side arm is gonna come behind the back and you're gonna reach for the toes. Pay attention to if you have any limitations in your shoulder. Now, feel the stretch in the shoulder first and then slowly start to twist towards that shoulder and see if you can look past the shoulder. Gentle spinal twisting. I can feel this in my obliques. I really worked with them yesterday. And this is a posture where you might not feel it in your obliques, but they're certainly being worked right now. So that's a bonus. Exhale, release your hand from your toes or your foot. Rotate back to center. Release the arm down. Take a full round of breath. Exhale, let it go. Remove the foot. Now, from here, we are going to come on to our backs. We're going to come into, we're going to start off with a supported bridge and then with the option to extend the legs so that we can open up the front of the body. So I'm going to suggest that you have a block handy and that you bring the block midway onto your mat so that when you lower down, your knees are going to start off bent. Your back is going to come onto the mat. Shoulders come down. Head comes down. Now align your heels with your glutes. Take your block in your hand. If you don't have a block, don't worry. You can use a folded up blanket or a pillow. As you inhale, lift your hips up and then position the block underneath your sacrum. So that's gonna be the triangular bone at the base of the low back. We don't want the block on the low back. If you can find the waistband of your pants, the block is gonna go lower, so more towards the glutes. Now, if you want a deeper opening, and still have a lot of surface area, you can lift the hips again and position a second block. If you only have one block, then you can rotate it to the mid height. That's just gonna be a little less surface area. Now, we're starting off in this supported bridge and we can certainly stay here, but to get a deeper stretch for the psoas muscles, we're gonna hold onto the block and we'll extend one leg at a time so that we're bringing the heels down. Now feeling a nice opening at the front of the hips. This is an awesome posture for a counter stretch if you spend a lot of time sitting in a chair. And if you're on one block at the mid height and that feels really wobbly, remember you can stack two blocks if you have them or a pillow. If you feel pinching in your low back, you're gonna to wanna to reposition the blocks so that you don't have that pinching sensation. It could be a nerve that's being compressed and we certainly don't wanna cause nerve damage. So check that. And if you like the leg extension, but if it feels like too much to do both sides at one time, you can take the option of bending one knee. Now, if you're taking that option, I'll let you know when it's time to switch it up If both legs are extended and you feel like you could go even deeper, maybe you lift the arms up, fingertips to the sky, and then rotate the arms overhead, lowering the hands and the arms down. If that becomes too much, you can always bring the arms back down to your side. Now, if you've got one knee bent and you're doing one side at a time, now's the time to switch up those legs. So opposite knee bends, leg extends. 
whichever option you choose. I find it very helpful to rotate the palms down to the mat, really using the arms to ground down like anchors. And taking the time to open the front of the body to serve ourselves through our practice. Practicing the Hatha style today in our yoga class. We've got about 20 seconds left in this posture. Prepare to slowly come out. We're going to bend one knee at a time if the legs are extended. Once both the knees are bent and the heels are in line with the glutes, we'll press the feet to the mat, lift the hips, remove the block from underneath, slowly lower down from the top of the spine, bone by bone, all the way down to the tailbone. Once you feel the tailbone connect, Heel toe the feet open the width of the mat and let the knees drop in towards each other. Taking this position as a release for the low back. Maybe your hands come onto your belly, coming back to your breath awareness. Inhale, feel the belly pressing to the palms. Exhale, feel the belly soften. A couple more rounds of breath. Exhale, let it go. From here, we're going to find our way on to our seat. You can roll over onto one side, slowly coming into the fetal pose and then coming up to seated, or you can lift your feet, take your hands under your knees, lift the tailbone and gently rock up and down the spine, maybe a few times until you come onto your seat. And we're coming onto our seat so that we can set ourselves up for legs up against the wall. Now, if you don't have a wall space that's available, you can come straight into Shavasana at this point of your practice. If you do have a wall space that's available and you want to take legs up the wall, today is going to be a supported option with a bolster underneath the sacrum. So the same area where you just had the blocks underneath. For this option, I'm going to demonstrate with a bolster. If you do not have a bolster, that is okay. Grab a pillow, whether it's off your bed or off your couch or a blanket, just something cushy and supportive to position underneath your sacrum. So as I was saying, I'm gonna use a bolster and I'm gonna bring that bolster all the way up to the wall space. Then I'm gonna bring one side of my hip all the way up to the bolster. And then I'm going to swing my legs up the wall at the same time. I'm gonna to try to position myself onto the bolster. Now this is a little tricky because you really have to scoot yourself up. And then shimmy around. So as you shimmy around, you wanna feel the support of the sacrum directly onto your prop. So my prop is really thick and dense. It'll be more comfortable to come into this option if you've got a lower prop, like a folded blanket. So now I want my legs to be straight and I'm just gonna let the legs relax and then I'm gonna let my arms relax out to the sides. Now remember, if you don't have a wall space, it's no problem at all because you can always come into Shavasana, which I'll demonstrate for those of you that want that option instead. And for Shavasana, all you need is free space to lay down on. Positioning your body onto the mat, creating space 
space between the legs, space at the armpits. Whether you have your legs up the wall or you're on the mat, tuck your chin towards your chest, lengthen the back of the neck. Completely let your body relax. Close your eyes. With your gaze inward, bring all of your awareness to your breath. Practice inhaling deeply through the nostrils. Exhale, slowly let go. Slow, slow, slow release. Inhale completely. Exhale, sigh of relief. Continue to focus on your breath. If you've got legs up the wall with a cushy prop, feel the support. If you're in a reclined Shavasana, with each exhale, let your body melt down into the mat, into the ground, into the earth, completely letting go with each exhale breath. Feeling so much gratitude for this time of presence. Enjoying this time of relaxation. Allowing yourself to integrate the movement that you've done in your Hatha practice today. Wherever you are, gently start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Know that it's time to end our practice. Ending it in this position. Lift your arms up, let the palms meet. And then bend the elbows, lower the thumbs to the heart center. Take a deep inhale through the nostrils. Exhale, let go. Thank you so much for allowing me to guide you today in our practice. Namaste.